want me to take a break? Is it time? Is it? Is it time to take a break? Yeah. Do you want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Do you want me to throw the ball? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Una. Una. That's, that's the thing that... The Book of Eli uh, was the first movie where I really used digital a lot. Um, and that was because the, the Hughes brothers, the directors, Albert and Alan Hughes, um, really were going for uh, a certain look. And so I was the concept artist. But I was here in North Carolina um, going through the script with Albert, who lives in Prague. And we would just work on Skype and then go through the script and I'd pick out scenes that I was inspired by. He'd do the same. I'd do a rough drawing of what maybe that shot could look like, send it to him. And it was really great to be able to draw stuff on the Cintiq because I could do it quickly and it would be on the computer. I could share my screen. I could show him, you know, some ideas. And it was like we were working together, which was really cool. So being able to draw in real time and have him see it was really good. I'll often start working on a movie before it's even cast. So I started on it before Denzel Washington was even the actor in the movie. So part of what I'll do is, you know, to get an actor excited about it, we'll do these paintings or to get more funding or to get the studio behind it. I did a painting of Eli walking into, into town. It's like an old Western, but it's this post-apocalyptic setting. Once we've kind of figured out the shot and the angle and the rough composition, then I'm figuring out what are the costumes, you know, what's the kind of the color scheme, what's... What's all, what do the people look like? What kind of weapons do they have? What kind of cars? What kind of, you know, it's so fun. And then, you know, running all this stuff by Albert, you know, one of his comments would be like, well, can we make everything darker, dirtier, stuff like that? And that's like, I'm so glad I was working digital on that because then I could go in and add some textures, play with the levels, and also work in layers. So when I'm working in layers, I could draw, you know, different elements and different layers. If I wanted to, you know, like pull focus on something, I could put it on a different layer, tweak the colors, the lighting, you know, stuff that was way more time consuming doing it traditionally um, with analog tools. After doing all that stuff for maybe half a year or so, then, you know, so many months later, you see it actually like built you know, in the desert, New Mexico, and and uh, and all of a sudden it's real. And there's like there's a scene where there's uh, these th this scary couple live in a house, and there's these trucks with armor, and there's the windmill, and everything that was in the drawings and paintings that I did that were, um, you know, it had it it was all of a sudden it was real. You know, so that was that was really cool. All we knew in the beginning was I, I, I was going to do something with Microsoft and it was going to be some sort of storytelling and we were going to use the internet. And that was all we knew. And I thought, well, some, the person, we need somebody who can kind of plant seeds that can come to fruition later and, then, and maybe there's some audience participation and, and all that kind of stuff and, and somebody who thinks very visually. So I was immediately like wishing we could get Edgar Wright to to write it, you know, and to, to really kind of, you know, take control of this thing. Luckily, uh, we both wanted to work together, so it worked out and we were able to do this animated series. Um, but yeah, that was another example of me being able to work digitally on the Cintiq. It was a combination of like comics, games, animation kind of language. And I had, you know, a couple guys in LA building 3D models for me based on my sketches and then I'd have you know an animator in Philadelphia then my sound guy was in London and the composer was in Belfast and Edgar was always flying back and forth between uh, Los Angeles and London. JP drew his part on paper I've drawn and colored my part on the Cintiq and you know Don built his robot in 3D Studio Max and you know, so we're all using different tools put it all together it's great that's another thing with this job is you're always investing in new tools and stuff 
So I got this antique and it took me a while to feel comfortable and confident with it. And then once I finally did, um, I just never, you know, I never went back to the tablet. I, I would just, I just loved it. It was very intuitive. I liked drawing on the, using the brushes and everything. And it felt like, you know, I was painting. So when I would do a painting, scan it in, I'd pull it up on this antique. I could touch things up. If I wanted to do revisions on something like Warner Brothers would have me do a revision on an actor or something, or you had to tweak a likeness or, you know, rather than having to paint it and scan it in and patch it in or, you know, whatever, I could just almost always do it on the Cintiq. It still works. The thing is kicking ass. But uh, but Kyle Webster, who makes Photoshop brushes for Adobe, he came over to my house and, and uh, was in the studio. And, and I'm like, yeah, man, none of these brushes are, like, working. Like, there's all these tilt ones and stuff. And he says, well, that's because your Cintiq is so old. <laughs> you've, had, you've been using this thing for, you know, 12 years. You know, and I'm like, yeah, this is my baby. Um, and he's like, I think it's time to upgrade. <laughs>